You are in the right place at the right time. Glory to God. Did you come ready to worship tonight? Did you come ready to lift your voices and magnify our Father who is worthy to be praised? He's worthy of the honor, worthy of the glory. He's so worthy and holy and righteous. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. So let's lift our voices tonight. And let's worship him and tell him how worthy he is. Glory to God.
much we thank you, how much we want to magnify your name. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. I adore you. You mean more to me.
We worship you. We worship you, King of Kings. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love and your care for us. Thank you for making us free to worship you. Thank you because you deserve all glory. You deserve all praise. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. And thank you for being among us. Father God, thank you for the master plan that you had. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for rescuing us from hell. And now we're restored in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us today. Have your way. Feel free to move among us because we are here to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Amen. You are in the right place, and we will be greatly blessed. Amen. Let me tell you where the Lord is, there is freedom, there is overabundance, there is everything that we need. Amen. So turn to your neighbor as you take your seat and tell them, everything that you need will be provided in this service. Pay attention and open your heart and you will be blessed. Amen. Glory to God. We want to welcome you tonight. We are excited that you are here with us. We get together to come to the throne of God, to his presence. Amen. And not only love on him, but receive what he has for us. Amen. Let me tell you, the word of God, when it's preached, the, the spirit of God backs it up and makes it real to your life and answers start coming. So be ready for answers tonight. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. I have a few announcements for you and then we'll continue with the service. Uh, the first one that I have that we want to let you know is that uh, phase one of the renovations that we have here in Spirit of Faith are scheduled to be completed this Friday, March 28th. Amen. So that has gone fast. Praise God. Amen. We're excited about that. With that said, uh, we need your help. Amen. So uh, this coming week on Tuesday, April 2nd, at 5.30 p.m., Thursday, April 4th, at 5.30 p.m., and then Saturday, April 6th, at 9 a.m., uh, we are going to be putting the classrooms back together. So if you can please uh, come and add your supply, uh, it would be wonderful. You know, the many hands make the work easy. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you there. We are a family. Amen. And as we all add our supply, everything flows smooth. Amen. So with that said, uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the hospitality foyer. If you can add your name in there as you're able to, that will help us plan and make sure that we're ready, uh, knowing uh, who's going to be here and what we're going to do. Amen? We can coordinate it. With that said, the uh, East Bookstore entrance uh, is going to be reopening uh, this following Wednesday, April 3rd. Okay? And also, Phase 2 is going to be uh, starting on Monday, April 8th. Okay? So once we do all the moving around, then uh, it'll start. So during phase two, the following areas are going to be closed. This is going to be the South Hospitality Foyer entrance, which is the main one here, okay? And then uh, that is gonna be starting on Monday, April 8th. That's going to be closed, okay? East Bookstore and the entrance, the East Bookstore entrance and the cafe entrance are going to remain open to be able to access the building, okay? And then the hospitality foyer, Faith Racers Hallway, Nursing Mother's Room, and Nursing Mother, uh, well, those three are going to be closed, okay? With that said, the Nursing Mother's uh, Room is going to be relocated to the We Fisherman Classroom, which is back behind us, okay? Uh, so the, the ones that are opening is uh, We Fisherman, Little Sprouts, and Planet, Ro Planet Rock, and Air Force as well which are all the ones here on the back of us, okay? Light and easy. This area opens, that area closes, okay? Now, uh, Faith Racers, the, 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 the kids, are going to be dropped off at the cafe uh, before service, and then they're going to be picked up as well in the cafe after service. 
but uh, they will be having their class in the family center. So you go take them there, and then you know, the, the teachers will be taking them to where they're going to be having their class, okay? And the cafe is going to be open before service, and then also after service uh, for sell service items only, okay? So during service, the cafe is going to be closed so that we can use it uh, for the kids, okay? With that said, uh, phase two, uh, okay, so once we complete all those renovations, then we'll have to rearrange everything to make sure everything's open and ready again. So if there's any questions that you may have, you can uh, reach out to Ms. Kim Burak and she can help you with those questions, okay? Light and easy, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, the next announcement is Wednesday, April 3rd, which is this coming uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be having corporate prayer. Amen? So we're excited about that. You know, let's just keep praying the plan of God, getting the revelation, taking the steps. Amen? And it's light and easy. So we look forward to seeing you here at 7 p.m. after our service preliminaries. And it's going to be here in the sanctuary as well. Uh, with that said, uh, youth is going to be here in the main sanctuary for that as well. They will be able to participate and receive and add their supply as well. Okay? And uh, children's classrooms, they're going to follow their regular schedule as well. Now, this Sunday, March 31st, we have our Easter extravaganza. Amen? So we're excited about that. It's excited for all the kiddos. You know, exciting for us as well. And we uh, need to uh, also... Make sure that we invite people, you know, that uh, you have in your heart, friends, family, co-workers, anybody that comes to your heart. If they don't go sometimes to church, that's an opportunity because, you know what, God, God talks to them. And they many times want to come during Easter time. So that's a great opportunity for us. Let's reach out to them. God has so much for us. And as we go to church, we are able to receive more from him. So let's allow them to be a blessing to them that way, to bring them over. So with that said, after service, children ages 0 to 11 are invited to go uh, hunt for eggs, okay? And then uh, everybody is going to be welcome as well for snacks and to get the picture taken with the Easter bunny. So that'll be fun for the kids as well. Amen. Uh, yay, yay. <laughs> so uh, for more details, you can visit everlyministries.org. It's under the events uh, page in there as well. Now, during the service, uh, there's going to be no Kingdom Kids classes so that everybody's able to be here, amen, and hear the Easter message as well. If there's any questions, Ms. Kimberly Buddha can help you with that as well. Now, with that said, we also have our candy drive, and we have food donations and helps ministry uh, sign up as well available. Uh, we are in need of three buckets of candy at this point, so that means that we have three completed, amen. We're going full force on that. Praise God that we always have a full supply. Amen. So we're excited about that. Remember that as you sow, you are also having the right to reap. Amen. So uh, we're excited about that. And uh, tonight is the last night to either put your candies. However, if you had it in your heart and for some reason you were not able to go purchase, you can add uh, in the offering envelope. In the other line, you can put Easter Outreach. And as you allocate those funds to that, we can go and do the purchase for you for the candies as well. Okay? Electronic giving is not available for that, but we can do it with that direction. Okay? Wonderful. And also, in preparation for the uh, Easter service, uh, we encourage you and invite you, you know, uh, it came in Pastor's heart, uh, some services that he preached about reaching uh, the, the non-believers. And uh, so these are uh, th a three-part series, and they're called, called uh, Preparing in Prayer for Reverend Robert's Meetings. But you know what? God, God is a God of order. And if we cooperate with that, then we are able to get his results. So these messages are special for that, you know, to be able to, to know how to pray for the unbelievers. Amen? So the part one is February 25th of 2019. Part two is April 15 of 2019. And then part three is May 13 of 2019 as well. You will be blessed. Okay? Uh, the services are available on YouTube and on Facebook as well. And uh, let's prepare that heart. Amen. Everything that God does is because of love. And, you know, he wants to reach out to people to be able to bless them. So we cooperate with that. Okay? 
Now, on Sunday, April 14th, uh, we have the wedding shower for Caleb White and Amber Simpson. We are very excited about that. Amen. We're a family, and we're excited of what God is doing in their life. Okay? So it'll be, take place at 12.30 p.m. in the Family Center Auditorium after service. Let's just join, you know, in celebration with them and be a blessing to them. So ladies are welcome so they can come after, to the, after service on April 14th to the wedding shower and uh, participate and celebrate with them. And uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the hospitality foyer. If you can add your name, it would be great. That way uh, we can also uh, prepare accordingly. And if you can do this by Wednesday, April 10th, that would be great. Uh, they are registered at Amazon and Target, so light and easy to get, uh, you know, to be a blessing to them and get the items that they have in their heart. Amen? With that said, there's a cafe meal deal. Uh, it's only $6. makes your life light and easy. After service, you don't have to run, get a bite to eat, and then come back. You just go to the family center, and you can uh, pick up your your uh, your meal this is, is involved it involves a pulled pork sandwich coleslaw and chips and uh, you can purchase the tickets in the back of the sanctuary in the table back there uh, from now until wednesday april 10th uh, cash card and check are accepted so that you can make that purchase and then finally the last announcement that i have for you is uh sunday <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hey, a lot of things happening. Praise God. <laughs> uh, minister mantle class or service. It's on Sunday, April 21st at 6 p.m. And uh, in this minister mantle class, Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie share things that they have on their heart for their spiritual sons and daughters. And you know what? It's a blessing. It's open for the whole congregation. So if for some reason you have not been a part of that, uh, come come because you know the spirit of god reaches with certain things that you know is in those sessions so you have the honor and the opportunity to be here we look forward to seeing you there uh during this time uh child care is not going to be a uh, well will be available for toddlers ages one to three only and the other ones can come and be blessed as well amen, amen. pastor jay those are all the announcements that i have <laughs> praise god <laughs> well stand up with me <laughs> Find three people and tell them that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Are you awake? announcements didn't put you to sleep did they uh, I'm, I'm excited about the minister's mantle coming up that's uh, something we've had in our heart but with the two churches going now we were looking for looking for a date uh, but we found one praise the Lord and uh, so anyway I invite you to come we for a while we were saying well let's just make a list of the people that that we want to invite and then it got too hard so we just let it up to you to decide whether you wanted to come or not but it'll be focused more on ministry not so much you know just just feeding our faith so to speak as believers but uh, focused on ministry focused on things that apply more in that area so we've been wanting to do this for you know months actually and uh, but uh, we're looking for some more dates but we'll get them to you later so praise God tell your neighbor if you want to come then you can come <laughs> amen I mean you decide praise the Lord um, are you glad you're here tonight everybody's excited you're going to have a good service you're going to get something get, get answers get direction get... It's, it matters how you approach God approach, approach the word so we're hungry. Paul said, pray for me. So he didn't say, I'm praying for the utterance. He said, you pray. And so we're in agreement tonight, right? All right. It's time to receive this evening's tithes and offerings. So if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand there for the ushers to see it, and then they'll get you an envelope. If you're making checks, of course, make them to the church, Spirit of Faith. And, of course, you can give electronically, and that information is on the screen. Praise God. I want to read something to you. 1 Timothy 6, verse number well, let's back up here. Uh, let's go back to verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. How many of you know there's no, no condemnation in having things? 
and there's no condemnation in enjoying things. Notice he didn't say here, charge them that are rich in this world that they all go and do like Jesus said to that rich young ruler and they give it all away. That was one case, one situation where a man was attached to it. He, he, was, he loved it too much and he couldn't part from it or he couldn't serve Jesus because he couldn't part from it. Jesus was saying, well, then give it all away. Get in the plan of God. That's more valuable than that money. But see, you don't have to, you know, take that and make that apply to everybody. You can get your heart out of your money, your faith out of your money, and, and so forth and so on without parting with it. Yes, Tell your neighbor, now he went ahead and started preaching pretty good. <laughs> Charge them that are rich in this world. No, 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 they don't have to all give it away, but that they be not high-minded. How many of you know that's pride? Nor trust in uncertain riches. That's putting your faith in the wrong place. What do you mean uncertain riches? He's talking about money that they have laid up on the earth. <clears throat> How many of you know, uh, sometimes like, for example, in the rich young ruler case over there in the Gospels, that, that was not a case of misplaced money. It was a case of misplaced faith. He put his faith in this money that he had. Amen? And you can get your faith out of your money. Amen. And that doesn't mean you have to give it all away. But notice what he goes on to say. Uh, charge them they be, they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. Uncertain is because anything in this realm is not secure. You realize that. Somebody said, well, I got it in a real secure investment. Well, there's nothing that's, that's 100% secure. Uh, you know, uh, charge them that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. But notice this, but in the living God. How many of you know he's going to tell us how to put our faith in God? who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Then here's how to do that. That they, be, that they uh, do good, that they be rich in good works. In other words, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Now, I just, I just interpret that always. I'll interpret it, have money, we'll give. Ready, ready. Do you notice that? Ready, willing. Got it? And, and ready and willing to do something with it, anything God tells me to do with it. I'm not trusting it. I'm not depending on it. It's not my source. Come on, somebody. Anything God tells me to do with it, I don't have to debate. I don't have to question. I don't have to, not, not, I don't have to uh, struggle. I just obey God with it. Jesse DePlanis said, God, God, I have so much because God can trust me with what I have. If, if, you, if, 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 you, if you're not attached to it and you can do anything God said do with it, then you're worthy of being able to be trusted with abundance. Amen. Amen. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. These are all one. Each of these verses, each of these lines is a whole sermon, but we're not trying to preach every sermon. Then he said, laying up in store for, excuse me, in, in store for God. Huh? Are you looking at your Bible? You gonna let me preach wrong doctrine? <laughs> Laying up in store for God. Huh? Well, when we give, we're giving doing something for God, right? But you're also doing something for yourself. Laying up in store. It's way too quiet in here. I need to preach a whole bold preaching on money prosperity series. Laying up in store for themselves, for themselves. How many of you know when you give, you're doing something for yourself? laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That's the future. So let me rephrase that, securing your future financially. Here's, what's make your, here's what makes your future sure financially. Well, we just don't know what's coming down the pike. Who knows? The economy, they might do this. You know, if, blow, if, Bubba, blow, if Bubba Jones gets in there and doesn't do the right thing as president, well, then what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You're secure financially. It's not based on who's president, what the economy's doing, the job you have, whatever, whatever investments you have. It's, it's based on giving. It's based on your faith in God. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Now, somebody said, well, I thought we, I don't think we have to give money to get eternal life. See, eternal life is much bigger than a ticket to heaven. Yeah. Eternal life is actually a quality of life, and it is, it's already started down here in this life. And so he's talking about a good life down here. Now, um, 
So when it says here, um, he's talking about, I, I just want you to notice something. Can you just give me a minute here tonight? Uh, it's good to meditate on the word and not just read it, but meditate. And we could take a whole three weeks on this because it's just loaded with revelation. But I want to focus on this, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. A foundation is what stands under something and makes it certain. Are you following me? It's what stands under something and makes it certain. And here he's saying that our foundation financially, in other words, our faith for our financial future is supposed to be laid on something and it's not the money. It's the giving of the money. Amen. In other words, uh, your faith is not in what you get. Your faith is in what you give. Amen. Uh, when you place your faith in what you give, you've placed your faith in something that's sure. Because you've taken it out of this economy of this world and put it in a system and in a kingdom which will never end. It's eternal. It's not just temporal. It's eternal. But notice that the good foundation, when you build your financial, a foundation is something he's telling us to build our financial future. In other words, it's something that makes what our, our finances secure. Amen? Amen? Praise God. That's what a foundation is. It, it stands under something and makes it certain, makes it sure, makes it stable. In the Bible, though, the foundation that the Bible talks about is never... Um, it's never something natural. It's always something spiritual. Think about the, you know, in Matthew 7, it talks about Jesus is talking about whosoever hears these sayings of mine and do, does them, I'll liken him unto a man, a wise man, who built his house upon a rock. What is the foundation there? The foundation is hearing and doing the word. Some of you are looking at me like I, some of you, some of you are looking at me with a begging, longing look in your voice. Please preach this. Please, please preach this. I want to hear this. I want to hear this. So that's the foundation. Then you can look at 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 12. I'm not going to read it all. Uh, he said, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon. And he's talking about laying down spiritual truths, laying down spiritual truths. And you could look at that truth throughout the New Testament and other verses where he talks about the foundation and it's always spiritual truth. So our financial prosperity is not to be built on something financial or something economical or something, you know, a good job or something like that. It's to be built on spiritual spiritual truths and being a doer of those spiritual truths being a being a hearer but also a doer so what's your prosperity built upon amen it's built upon the redemption truth the realities of who we are in Christ it's built on spiritual truths putting first the kingdom of God all those kinds of things and it's built on the spiritual truth of sowing into the kingdom of God and reaping a harvest back out of that are you still glad you came tonight? It's built on being generous towards God. Woo! It's built on the Word getting in you and renewing your mind and, and, and building abundance mentality on the inside of you. Praise God. Are you still glad you came? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so this is what the Lord said to me years ago whenever he said, I was, I was, I was asking the Lord for help. I said, Lord, help me. He said, the uh, prosperity doesn't begin with more money in your pocket. It begins when my word finds a home in your heart. That's exactly what this verse is saying. It's not built on natural things. It's built on spiritual things. Hallelujah. So um, the word is the source of divine prosperity. Spiritual truths is the source of it. And I'll tell you, if you believe that, you'll lay aside a lot of things to get these truths on the inside of you. I mean, you'll set aside a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things that are distracting. Amen. Because you don't want to live another night with the frogs. You remember Pharaoh in the Old Testament? How many of you don't want to live another night with the frogs? Hold your hand up. Well, you don't have to. You can get this thing, get this thing established in your heart. Praise the Lord. So, um, a foundation is the beginning of something. If you build a house, you, the first thing you put down is a foundation, right? And so the beginning of prosperity is the financial truths of God's Word, or really all the truths of God's Word. You know the truth about walking in love. That's a financial scripture? 
All, all, those, all those truths about walking out, those are financial scriptures. See, don't just think, well, I, I got to get the, my mind renewed with the word concerning prosperity. That's true, but you have to get your mind renewed concerning everything that's connected to prosperity. Yeah. Following the plan of God is connected to it. Being led by the Spirit is connected to it. Walking in love is connected to it. The authority of the believer is connected to it. Being generous is connected to it. Amen. God will fund his plan, walk in his plan. So praise God. I, I mean, we could take a lot of time on this, um, but uh, it's important that we recognize what, what we're seeing here. Um, and, and really, uh, the, the, days are, the, the days between now and the return of Jesus in the economy of the world out there are not necessarily going to be grander and grander. So you better wean yourself off anything you're depending on in this natural realm and just make yourself live by faith. Can you say amen? How many of you know you don't want to be lazy and get spiritually flabby? Uh, um, and then have to hit a crisis or hit a situation where something you, where faith is called for, <laughs> to where you gotta you gotta okay okay let me let me find out what the word says. That's a bad way to live. That's the, the foundation that you know Matthew seven there where he talks about here's, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them he's like a man builds his house a wise man builds his house on the rock you remember that. And then the later guy, he built his house on the sand. But the same storm came to both of those houses. The only difference between what happened to one house and the other house was the preparation that was made before the storm came. One got down to the rock and built it on the rock, which was, he told us what it was. Somebody said, the rock is Jesus. Yes, but he said more specifically, it's hearing and doing hearing and doing. Whoever hears these saying of mine and does them, I liken him unto a wise man, build his house on the rock. Amen. You can love Jesus and worship him and raise your hands in church, but you don't do what he says. And you're not building your foundation on the rock. Poke your neighbor and say, you know, that must be for somebody behind us because that's just awesome preaching that he's doing right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any doers I got in the house tonight? You don't need to wait for a feeling to sow a seed. You don't need to even wait for a prompting of the Holy Ghost to sow a seed. He does prompt us. We get leadings, but you don't need to wait for that. You can just decide. I mean, I doubt if there's any farmer this spring that's going to wait for a prompting to plant corn, and every single one of them are going to reap corn this fall because they just decided, hey, I'm going to plant some corn. Let's stand to our feet. Are you ready to give tonight? You're not, you're not sleeping, are you? You're, you're awake. You're excited. You're thrilled. Praise the Lord. I, I, I don't know about some of you. I'm just not sure about some of you. I'm looking at you, and you kind of got a blank look on your face. <clears throat> Those are the ones that need a good dose of prosperity preaching and, and, and just, get, just preach it until they get mad. Amen. I think somebody ought to, I think we ought to start preaching prosperity until we either have revival or a riot, one of the two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's this spirit of faith, family church. We believe the whole Bible. We believe the whole Bible. Old, old preacher years ago, he said, eat the whole roll. Remember God told you, Jeremiah, eat the roll, the scroll that I gave to you. Remember that? The old preacher said, eat the whole roll. The parts you like, the parts your flesh doesn't like, the part, you, you, the part that you, 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 you sit tighter on your seat when the pastor's talking about it. <clears throat> Shout your way through those kinds of things. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shout your way through those kinds of things. I've been there. I know what that's like. Where you, you know, you're trying to get money from me. I've been there and had that attitude and stayed broke the whole time. Amen. They weren't trying to get anything out of me. They were trying to get something to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, give God a shout before we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now, now turn to your neighbor and say, I just love when pastor gets real bold like this. 
And if your flesh just said, you lied, you just turn to your other neighbor and say, I just, my heart just loves, I just love the word, I just love the word. <laughs> Amen. I didn't say anything that wasn't in the word, right? Right there in the word. Father, thank you tonight for your word. We are not just hearers, we are doers. And thank you, Father, that it secures our future financially. Hallelujah. When we're doers, Father God, you, you are, that, that's you preparing our future, preparing everything that concerns us. Father, sometimes I've had you speak to me and say, uh, I want you to sow a seed. And later I came to a need and you said to me, I saw this need coming and I had you sow a seed. Thank you that you know the future better than we know the past. And you always get us ready for it because you're such a faithful God. We, Father, respond to you. We give. We sow tonight. We honor you, put you first. Thank you, Father that our days ahead are better than the days we've had in the past. In Jesus' name, because we're going from one degree of glory uh, to another, and we're going from increase to increase, because you're increasing us more and more. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bring your Bible tonight. If you brought it open with me, and we'll start over. And I think the best place to start would be uh, maybe in the book of Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms. And, uh, well, my, my, my. This is, this is one of those services you, you just don't know quite sure where to start. You're just going to dive in somewhere and, and, uh, and believe God to get to where, get the utterance that God's given to us. So um, go to the book of Psalms. We've, how many of you have been uh, here in... I don't know, the last couple of weeks, we've been preaching a lot on praising God, worshiping God, and some of the benefits of that. And we're going to, it's kind of going to be in the same line. It's not exactly, but uh, we'll get into a little bit of that. Psalm 100, verse 4. Psalm 100, verse number 4. I want to go further with this teaching we've been doing um, and about entering into the things of God, having access into the things of God through praise and worship. And so this is one of the verses we've been using, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, right? And into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Well, we've been saying a lot about that, and there's a lot you can go back and listen to again. In fact, I encourage you to go back and listen to it again. I'm, I'm like you. You're like me. You don't get it all the first time. I don't get it all the first time. Um, so, but I encourage you to keep on listening to that. But a couple of uh, services ago that I preached on this at least, um, uh, there was uh, a service we did, maybe it was on a Wednesday night, talking about entering into a direction and answers through praise and worship. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were here in that uh, service, you kind of remember that. We won't take the time to go back over that. I just think, uh, like the services I said are all available, you can go back and listen to those. I encourage you to do that. But um, I want to get into this further because you know, here he's talking about in Psalm 100, he's talking about entering into things. And when, how many of you know when you access the presence of God, that's another way to say it, you're not accessing just God and his presence, you're accessing everything that he is, everything that he knows, everything that he has, uh, all the impartations, all the strength, all the wisdom, all the counsel, all the answers, amen, all the anointing to destroy the yoke, you're entering into, I mean... Uh, I mean, that's just so huge of a subject. Everything God is and has, you can access through praise and worship. Yes, sir. Amen. And so um, one of the things I want to get into tonight, just for time's sake, just get right on, just, just get right into it, is accessing the wisdom of God. Amen. The wisdom of God. Yes. This came up in my spirit this morning when I woke up. I was meditating on it, and it got real strong in me today. Um, but... Um, if you go through the Bible, 
if you go look, look through the, the you know, Old and New Testament, really, you can find scripture after scripture after scripture that talks about the spirit of wisdom. I mean, Ephesians 1. God's not, God give, I pray that uh, the eyes of our understanding, that God will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom is of the spirit. Amen. Um, so we're going to look at that uh, tonight and, uh, and really find out a little bit more about wisdom. You might not be excited just at the beginning, but by the, by the end of this, you'll understand why this is so important. Um, like in Deuteronomy 34, 9, it says that Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. And so really this, this verse tells us that the, the wisdom comes from the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I mean, I don't know about you, but I was dumb until the Holy Ghost started teaching me. <laughs> I'm not going to say that about you, but I, I just talk about it for myself. I made a lot of dumb mistakes. Amen. Now, you know, I, 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 I think you probably are a little smarter than me, but, but I'm, I'm doing a whole lot better because the Holy Ghost is teaching me. Amen. I mean, he doesn't say it this way, but in, in, in one sense of the word, I can paraphrase sometimes the things he says. And sometimes it's almost like he's saying, don't be a dum-dum, do this. <laughs> Amen. So, but, but it's of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The spirit of which, you see that? The spirit of wisdom. In other words, it's something that comes by the Holy Ghost, given by the Holy Ghost. It's not something you figure out with your mind. Wisdom's not something that, you know, you figure out because, you know, you went to college and figured it out or something. And so um, Joshua had this by the laying on of hands. So, so whenever it says he had the spirit of wisdom, that means he really could deal wisely in the affairs of life. Now, um, you remember Joshua 1.8, this book of the law will not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and may observe do according to all that's written therein, then thou make thy way prosperous, and thou have good success. The Amplified says, and the Greek, I've been studying this, God's been talking to me about this, and the Greek is actually the, exactly what the Amplified says. Uh, the Amplified says, rather than you'll, you'll uh, uh, you know, you'll deal, why, how's this say it now? I can't remember, I'm thinking of the Amplified. But the King James says, rather than uh, you'll have uh, good success, How's it say it there, King James, Joshua 1 8? You'll, you'll, uh, Joshua 1 8. Joshua 1-8. Not to put out of that mouth, I just quoted it. Praise the Lord. Am I going too fast for you? No, You're going to keep up with me tonight? Yes, sir. All right, good. <laughs> But the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate there in day and night that I may observe to do according to all that's written there. And then thou make the way thy prosperous. <laughs> then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> The Amplified says you'll deal wisely and have good success. That's exactly what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew doesn't just say you'll have good success. You'll deal wisely and have good success. So that wisdom there that he's going to get to deal wisely, it comes from the Word because you'll meditate in it day and night. You'll meditate in the Word day and night. The Word is God's wisdom. And the Holy Ghost will teach you God's wisdom. And every time he leads you into something, he'll, it'll be in line with the word because the word and the spirit agree. But the Holy Ghost will have to give you more specifics that the word doesn't cover because the word doesn't tell you every little detail of the wisdom of God that God has for your, your life or the plan of God for your life. I mean, you know, you just take some of the things about, you know, which course am I to take in life? Uh, what am I to do with my, my uh, you know, uh, what's my, what career am I to take? It? Or am I called to the ministry? Or is it business? Or what am I supposed to do? You know, where do I work? Uh, who do I marry? Amen. Oh, please give, get wisdom on that one. <laughs> right? Amen. Praise God. All the single people said, thank you, Jesus. Yes. So uh, there, those things the Holy Ghost is going to give you the wisdom of God on. He knows better than you. Yes, he does. <clears throat> Brother, I remember Dr. Dufresne said whenever he, uh, he was uh, back on the market. <laughs> <laughs> He said, he said, I don't like this one, I don't like that one, you know. So he was, he was telling God, and, he, and God said, just be quiet. You don't know how to pick them. <laughs> Remember he said that? I didn't say that. God said that to him. I'm just repeating what God said to him. And I, I think it's pretty evident God knew how to pick them because he found Pastor Nancy and is like, my God. <laughs> anybody, 
Anybody glad he married Pastor Nancy? I think God knows how to pick them. Hallelujah. Well, I'll get off of that because some of you are getting, turning blushing red and all that. But he, was make, he was made wise, Joshua was made wise through the anointing of the Spirit and through meditating in the Word of God. Can you see that? And so what's he doing because of that? He's making right decisions. That's huge. You don't get, the, I'll tell you to be honest with you. Can I just be honest with you? I mean, I don't mean to say that, act like I'm not being honest until I say that. But, but the fact is that it's not the person who works the hardest that gets ahead the most. It's the person that works the smartest. And smart means following the Spirit of God and following the Word of God. There are people that look like they're getting way ahead of you. But life ain't over yet. You know what I'm, I'm talking about? And the fat lady hadn't sung yet. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't looking at anybody. Some of you, some of you tonight are in rare form, but anyway. Um, but, you know, the, the wisdom of God is something that comes by keeping, continuing to renew your mind and continuing, listen to me, continuing to enter into the Spirit through things like praise and worship and getting the mind of God, amen, clear what the, what's the mind of God. The mind of God is not in your mind. The mind of God is in your spirit. Now, I, I, there's a whole passage of scripture on that. Uh, it talks about that, but it's, it, 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 yes, God wants the mind of God in your spirit to rise up and enlighten your mind, but it doesn't start in your mind. God doesn't communicate with your mind. He communicate, he's a spirit. He communicates with your spirit, and he'll bear witness with your spirit about the mind of God or what God has in mind. So whenever he does, that's the wisdom of God. It might not seem like it to your mind at the time, but it's the wisdom of God. And if you'll follow that, it'll be the wisest thing you ever did. Amen. Yes, sir. There'll be times your mind will say, no, 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 no that, 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 that's not good common sense. Listen to me. We ought to live by good common sense unless the Spirit of God's witnessing to us about something that the mind says that's not good common sense. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about just living, you know, foolish for foolishness sake. We ought to use good common sense in all the affairs of life. But if the Holy Ghost is dealing with you about something that, that uh, uh, you know, to the natural man doesn't make sense, amen, then, then go ahead. Now, now, if you're going to take any time on things like that, take time to make sure you're hearing clearly. But once you're hearing clearly, then prepare yourself to launch out into it. Even when the mind's going, uh, does not compute. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and we could take a lot of time on that. Maybe we will. But um, hallelujah. I've had people that say, you know, uh, uh, how do you, how do you, it seems like, seems like, you know, you seem to always know how to handle the situations that come up. It's part of the equipment of being in the plan. People say, I don't, I don't know how you do that. Well, <laughs> you would be able to do it also if you were called and were being obedient to that call and, and, and God had, you, you know, you're in the plan of God. Then you have that wisdom just like anybody else would. But because you're not called, or may, you know, you're called, I'm not saying you're not called, but to do what we're doing. You're not called to do what we're doing. Then you don't have the grace to make those decisions. I don't know if you remember Pastor Nancy, she said a number of years ago, she said, God, right before Dr. Frank went to heaven, started asking her, what would you do in this situation? And he was starting to school her, unknown to her, school her into taking the leadership of that ministry. Amen. And, and uh, whenever she got into the leadership position of that ministry, because Dr. Dufresne went to heaven, then she said, oh, I understand now how Dr. Dufresne was making all these decisions. There was a grace on him for it. The anointing was there to take that place. So don't ever say, I could never do that. Well, if God called you to it, there'd be an equipment for doing it. It's amazing to me. I mean, the Holy Ghost is a genius. He make you look smart. People will say, how did you do all that? How, how did, well, I, I, just, I, di I didn't know how to do it either, but I just followed the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's good preaching. 
Amen. All right, so Ephesians 1.17, uh, we just mentioned that, that God said to pray that we would be filled with the, um, you know, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. And so there's so many verses. Ecclesiastes 2.16, Isaiah 11.2 talks about it. Isaiah 11.2 is real strong. Daniel had the spirit of wisdom on him and he knew the meaning of dreams. There's so, there's so much about it. Um, but anyway, uh, what we want to look at here is, uh, is uh, some of this getting some specific answers to things that your faith just doesn't seem to be working on. The wisdom of God is what God knows about your situation. There's a lot of meanings of the term wisdom in the New Testament and the Old Testament, but this is one of the things. It's from James. In fact, go over to James chapter number one. Um, James chapter number one talks about the wisdom of God and uh, we, we read, you know, the whole starts out with verse number two. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials, right? Knowing this, the trying of your faith worketh or exercises endurance. Remember that? Uh, but let, that patience means endurance. But let patience or endurance have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So he's talking about uh, staying in faith, staying in the joy of the Lord. And, and, and the word uh, uh, patience means enduring in faith or enduring in the joy. Keeping the joy, continuing to walk by faith. Amen. Amen. Believe in God for what you're needing in, in any given test or trial. And then he said... Uh, let patience have a perfect worth. You may perfect an entire wanting nothing. And then he said in verse five, look at this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Notice that he's a generous giver. He's willing to give you your answer. Yes. Lack, if lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Give to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it'll be given him. Look at that. It'll be given him. Upbraideth not means he's not looking for your faults. He's not saying, well, you, you've not, you've not, you've, no. <laughs> he's not looking for, he's not accusing you. Right. How many of you know we're already kicking ourselves because of the situation we got ourselves into anyway? Right. And God's not going to come along and kick us too. Right. I mean, we need his help. <laughs> right. So he said, I, I'm there to help. Right. Even if you got, it in, got yourself into it yourself. Anybody ever got yourself into your in a mess? You didn't need God. You did it all by yourself. I, I mean, I've done that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're good at that. Right? We can do that. I mean, the flesh is good at that. And the unrenewed mind is good at that. It's good at messing our lives up. It's good at messing up marriages. It's good at messing up our finances. It's good at going bankrupt. It's good at destroying our bodies and so, so we get to be 39 and we can barely walk anymore or something like that. But... The Holy Ghost will give you wisdom and make you smart to where you don't mess your life up like that. All right, so the context, so verses two through four, the context here is any, King James says, count all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Whatever test or trial you're going through, temptation means test or trial. Um, the context is, is going through a test or trial. And so whenever in that situation, if you are standing in faith and persevering, notice he talks about patience, which means persevering, and nothing seems to be changing. Now, I'm not talking about after three minutes. But you know what I'm talking about. It just, it just it seems like it's nothing. I mean, I don't mean just seems like. It's just nothing's been changing. Time, I mean, week after week after month after month after year after year. Then he said, don't just keep don't just keep putting your head down plowing. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you're, you're pressing, I'm in faith. Yeah, and you got high blood pressure too, you know. <laughs> That's not faith. Am I, gonna, am I gonna get enough help to get this out tonight? Then he said, ask God for wisdom. I mean, when you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. 
Ask God for wisdom. In other words, let's put it this way. Ask him what he knows about this situation. Ask him what he knows about this situation. Because how many of you know God knows everything? And he knows, uh, he knows what you don't know. And he knows that you don't know. But he's willing to give. He's willing to share. He's willing to give you the answer. Hallelujah. And so um, sometimes you need more specific direction. Sometimes we have applied our faith out of our own minds. In other words, well, I mean, we need healing, so 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we're healed, so I'm just going to stand on that. Well, that's in the Word, but so is there a lot of other things in the Word. What's the Holy Ghost dealing with your heart about? Well, I don't know. Okay, pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Because yes. when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying the wisdom of God. Oh, that's good. That's good. Did you know that? You're praying, out the, you're praying out what you don't know. And as you pray in the Holy Ghost, something will come up. I said, something will come up. Unless God lied about it. Did he say here, you, you, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask of God. And then, and then uh, did he say here, he'll give to all men liberally? He'll do that. He'll give you the answer. He'll show you why something isn't working. Well, I don't want to ever say it's not working. Well, sometimes it's not working. Sometimes it's not working. I didn't mean after three minutes. I don't, I don't even mean after three days. But there's times. <laughs> let's just be honest about it sometimes. There's times things just aren't working. I've been standing in faith, you know, for 16 years for the hoogamooga to go away. Well, it doesn't take God 16 years for the hoogamooga to go away. Dr. Frank used to call it, call it the hoogamooga. We still don't know what the hoogamooga was, but <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It was just... If you got the hoogamooga, man, that's bad. <laughs> God will give you the answer. I said, God will give you the answer. Sometimes we approach faith mentally and we apply the, the, the word inaccurately for our situation. Come on, somebody. There are general truths in the word of God about you know, us being redeemed from sickness. Let's just talk about sickness, for example. Those truths are in the word of God, but so are many other truths in the word of God. I was one time, <clears throat> I was, you know, this story, I'm going to tell it again. Just because you heard it doesn't mean the, that, that there's not more. There, Dr. Frayne used to say there's more juice in that bone. So we're going to chew that bone again. You ever seen a dog keep going back to that same bone? <clears throat> so I'm going to get some more juice out of a story that I, that I have. I won't tell bad stories about you, but I'll tell them about me. <clears throat> Only when I'm out of town, I tell about you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows who's who we're talking about. But. <laughs> I believe that people ought to be protected, don't you? But if somebody don't have any idea, then it's, that's fine. But, but I'll talk about me. <clears throat> I, was, I told you this story before. I was preaching at a church. It's actually up in Mattoon, Illinois. And uh, it's over, actually, here. But so I'm preaching, and, and we had a good series of meetings. And then at, at uh, breakfast, the pastor said right before we left, we had to drive the next day to, after the meetings were over uh, to a church south of there. I think it was only like an hour and a half drive or so, maybe, maybe, maybe less than that, <clears throat> to another church we were preaching at. And so, but he said, you want to go to breakfast? I said, sure. So I, I didn't really want to, but I said, we will. <laughs> but uh, being kind. But anyway, so we, we went. And so the pastor brought up things and wanted to talk and criticize. And so, you know, I don't know if you've ever been tired and, and somebody else is talking bad. You're going, ah, come on, just stop. And they keep talking. You go, yeah, I know that's right. And then you enter into it. And then, you're, and then you're sinning. Yeah, come on. Who are we talking about here? Somebody. <laughs> So he, he kept on talking. He's criticizing this preacher and that preacher, and I'm thinking, I don't want to talk about this. You know, but then, uh, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. And then before, yeah, I got in on it, got my licks in. 
you never done that. Except the Holy Ghost showed me about a month ago somebody was doing it about me. So I just, I just walk in love and, you know, pray that they get it. I don't mean get it, but I mean, you know. <laughs> We ought to start this service over. It's not quite, it's not quite flowing like I planned tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lord, I just pray they get it. But anyway, so, <laughs> um, so, um, but anyway, I'm driving. So we we finished breakfast, and for breakfast we didn't have ham and eggs. We had this so and so preacher and that preacher. So I'm driving. We're going to the next, next church. And within, I think, 15 or 20 minutes, I got sick all the way, all full-blown flu symptoms. I mean, runny nose, ugh, couldn't hardly, my, my throat's closed up. Uh, you know, just, just, you know, normally you can just feel it over a day or two or something, you know. You got to get it off of you. But, but this was just, I say supernaturally sick because it was just so sudden. And I'm thinking, well, Mr. Devil, ah, you can't do this. I don't know why I thought this, but I'm going to get down to that church and I'm going to, well, where we were staying, at, uh, where we were staying, and I'm going to check my bags in and I'm going to take authority over this. You ever done that? Yeah. I'm going to do it later. You know, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to use my faith. I'm going to use my faith. But I, anyway, so I got down there and checked in. and I knelt down and put bags in and I knelt down by the bed and I got my Bible out and I said, I opened it to James. Remember, it says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I opened that and I said, I said Lord, I'm just going to resist the devil. This is not of you. you know. And, and uh, he said to me, and he said, you're only quoting to me half of that verse. And I backed up because it didn't start there. I was just starting there myself. It backed up. You go back to the beginning. It says, "Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Right. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you." What is that? Four seven or four six, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Yeah. I said, "Well, uh, you know," he said, "You're only quoting me half that verse." I said, "Well, uh, I, I thought he was referring to because I had remember I'd talked to you about how I'd I, I don't know about Pastor Debbie. I think she was willing, but I was unwilling for a whole year." Yeah first year of traveling ministry I was grumpy amen miffed at God how many of you know you need to be a miffed master you need to master being miffed you need to you need to get a hold of yourself get a hold of yourself say hey get the joy where are you at come on but I wasn't doing that I was I was grumpy but then I got willing. So when he said, you've only quoted me half of that verse, I said, Lord, I got willing. I thought he was talking about that. I said, no, I made that adjustment. I'm, I'm glad to be out here on the road. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for telling me, you know, what your plan was, so forth and so on. Anyway, but he said, and he just ignored me. I'm talking to him, but he just ignored me. He said, how many times have I talked to you about criticizing preachers? I said, uh, well, <laughs> quite a few. Because it seems like, anyway, I won't, go, I won't get that there. Uh, but, but I said, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, what'd you do with that pastor up there at breakfast? I said, uh, well, <laughs> and I started getting, I was on my knees and I started getting lower. I don't know if you've, <laughs> I got down on my, I, I, just, I just laid on the floor. Because I, and rather than to be knocked down, I figured I'd rather just get down. <laughs> And, and he, he convicted me. I got so convicted. I said, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I started repenting. And I said, Lord, I did it. I, I said it. I said those things. Forgive me. And I'm, 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 I'm actually weeping just realizing what I'd done. And um, so anyway, that went on. I don't know how many, 10, 10 minutes or so, whatever it was. And I started kind of collecting myself again. And I'm, I'm laying there and I'm thinking, thank you for forgiving me, Lord. I'm just worshiping God. And I got back up and blow my nose. <laughs> And uh, then I'm trying to remember, what did I come here to begin with for? I, I came here, I, oh, yeah, and it was all gone. All the symptoms were gone. You know what God dealing with me about that was? That was the wisdom of God. Or he's showing me where I had stepped outside of wisdom so that I could get that door closed again. 
But I could have gone my way and had, whenever, whenever that prompting came up to me, and he said, you're only quoting to me half that verse. I could have gone my way, just blah, 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 and ignored that. And, and I'm believing God. And, and that thing would have run its full, whatever, four-day cycle or whatever it is. And I'd eventually coughed my way through it, blow my nose all the way through it, got on the other side of it with no help from God. Why? Because it's not just believe you receive or resist the devil. There's a lot of other wisdom in the word that we need to hear sometimes that, that, that closes the door to how it got in to begin with. You know the way out is determined by the way you got into it to begin with? If you and I got into it by not walking in love, which that's what that was, not walking in love. <clears throat> if you and I got into it by not walking in love, we're not going to get out of it by some other truth. You're going to get out of it by closing that door where we opened the door in that area. So can you see what he's saying here when he said, and you're, when you're going through a test or trial, ask God for wisdom. Now, it's not always something that we need to correct like that in my situation. Um, sometimes it's different things but uh, the wisdom of God is going to make things that haven't been progressing start lurching forward again I don't know why it seems like some Christians they're good at they're like a one trick pony they have one track mind when it comes to healing or it comes to prosperity or it comes to the blessings of God and they think there's only one spiritual truth that they have to, they have to know. That it's not just one spiritual truth. There are many things that feed into this. Many, many things that feed into it. Amen? Amen. Some even natural things that God will deal with you about. Am I making any sense tonight? So get the mind of God. What is the wisdom of God? It's the mind of God, what he knows concerning your need. <clears throat> Amen. That's what James is talking about. If anyone lacks the really knowing what's really what God has in mind, what God knows about this situation. Um, the wisdom of God is, it'll give you insight into what opens the door to things. It gives you insight into what's really going on in the spirit realm. Absolutely. I said it'll give you insight into what's really going on in the spirit realm. Um, so it's, wisdom is the right application of your faith to every situation. Can you see how I had applied my faith to the wrong thing? And, and when I, I'm talking about whenever I was, you know, saying I'm just going to resist the devil here. The Bible says resist the devil, he'll flee from you. You see how I was, I, was trying, I was beginning to apply my faith in an unskilled way without the leading of the Spirit, just out of my mind, and I was missing the real issue in the situation. My Lord God, help us. Amen. How do you know what, what, well, Pastor, there's so many things that I've heard taught over the years over, you know, from the Word of God and, and so many things. How do I know which one it is? It's called being led by the Holy Ghost. It's called being led by the Holy Ghost. You know these things by the Spirit. Amen. To really succeed in life, in faith, you might say life or faith, you have to always apply faith at the counsel of the Spirit. So it's not just find that verse that, 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 that I heard preached one time, yeah, just because I remember it. What is the Holy Ghost saying? Yeah. Yeah. What is the Holy Ghost saying? What, when I say saying, what is he bearing witness with you about? Right. Amen. Amen. Faith is not to be applied to the situations of life from your mind. Right. It's to be applied at the wisdom of God. Can I just say this? When you apply it with the wisdom of God, you will be applying the the, the uh, you will be applying your faith accurately, yeah. and things will happen more speedily. Can you see what I'm talking about? Things that have been just you know you've been kind of spinning your wheels on. I don't know why Christians are okay with spinning their wheels. I'm personally getting kind of you know, intolerant of spinning my wheels. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm just going to talk about me. Can, can somebody say amen to that? Yes. <clears throat> amen. 
Everything that we do with, in, in the spirit, we're to do together with God. In other words, we're to do it with the leadings of God. We're to do it at the, with the mind of God. So praise the Lord. Now, godly wisdom is not just good common sense. Because sometimes what people call good common sense is distorted. Because, are you still with me tonight? Because it hasn't, good sense hasn't been renewed with the word of God. People's minds have not been renewed with the word of God. So, well, it just wouldn't be good common sense for me to give 10% of my income to God. I mean, I'm not even able to pay my bills now. That wouldn't make any sense. Well, to the natural mind, the natural mind will never lead you into faith. It won't lead you. It's it just the natural mind will talk you out. Of, and, but people will say, now that, that, now that wouldn't be good sense. Amen. I'm just preaching pretty good tonight. And this is apply. You can apply this to many different areas. Um, you know. Uh, so, but but the the natural good common sense is is fine if your mind is being renewed with the Word of God. But without the Word of God and the leading of the Spirit, good common sense is just the product of men's minds based on sense knowledge and experience in this natural realm in the past. That's all it is. Amen. You often need more in life than good common sense or your own mind or your reasoning of your own mind can get for you. In that case, you'll have to move to higher thoughts and higher wisdom to get into something higher than you can produce on your own. Amen. That's the realm that faith operates in. Remember Isaiah chapter number... Uh, what is it, 55, verse 8 and 9? My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. But the natural mind will say, it'll read the word and find God's ways of doing things. It'll say, well, that just doesn't make sense. Well, you got to decide then, are you going to follow what you think is good common sense? Or are you going to follow the wisdom that is superior to your own thinking? Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, he's preaching pretty good. Faith operates above the reasoning of the mind in the natural sense realm. Amen? I'm not encouraging people to just go out and, and do things that don't make sense. I'm talking about whenever the Word of God tells you to do something that the mind doesn't agree with. Or the Spirit of God prompts you. Now, generally speaking, it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be wise to uh, reach out financially beyond where your budget is or, or you know what I'm talking about but if you have faith for something I've done that many times Pastor Debbie and I live way beyond our budget we've been doing that for years <laughs> well my, my you must have a big credit card bill nope we're, we're, we're within our measure of faith most Christians don't know how to they don't understand that doesn't compute well that's not possible is it well okay let's start back at 101 faith 101 <laughs> I don't know how you're why, why you're looking at me that way but it's now listen to me Acts 6 verses 3 through 5 you remember whenever they were choosing deacons there were some qualifications for the deacons they must be full of the Holy Ghost or, or have a good report first of all full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom and then they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So those are qualifications. Full of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, and faith, and a good report. You can really say there's four things there. In other words, they had good character. So Stephen was full of wisdom and of the Holy Ghost. It's full of wisdom. Notice that. Full of wisdom and the Holy Ghost. Full of wisdom and the Holy Ghost. And then full of wisdom and full of faith. Say it out loud. Full of wisdom and full of faith. What does that mean? Wisdom and faith do not conflict with one another. Amen. People say, well, I, 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 I can't do what the Bible says because, uh, you know, that, that, that's just not good wisdom. 
Wisdom and faith don't conflict with one another. What you're dealing with is your own natural thoughts. Tell your neighbor, he's getting ready to start preaching here in a minute. True wisdom that comes from God will cause faith to thrive. Amen. True wisdom will make you more accurate in faith and more specific in faith. Anything that causes a man to draw back from faith is worldly wisdom or devilish wisdom. The wisdom of God will not tamp down or diminish a vibrant faith life. Amen. Anything that does is either human or demonic. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I'm talking about where it's coming from. It's either coming from human thinking or it's coming from demon suggestions to your mind. Amen. You and I can have a faith that's always growing and always, you know, maybe the Bible talks about exceedingly growing faith. You, can have, you and I can have that, but it's not going to be, we're not going to get into that by human wisdom. We're going to get into it by the wisdom of this book and the leadings of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Godly wisdom doesn't pull you away from practicing, practicing faith. See, people get confused. Well, I got to use good wisdom here. Well, good wisdom doesn't mean you never use your faith. Wisdom and faith are not conflicting with one another. Now, godly wisdom will keep you within your measure of faith. Amen. But, but, but you know, some people, like if this, was, if this podium represented their measure right here and and. and reaching for the greater measure is over there and the lesser measure is over here. People live way over here. Wisdom will stay right up here. You know what I'm talking about? Stay right there. Keep stretching that. Keep stretching that. Keep stretching that. Without doing that, you'll never fulfill the plan of God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go home and preach this to myself because I enjoyed it myself with myself better than I'm enjoying preaching it to you. Praise the Lord. So godly wisdom makes you more skillful. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make you draw back. It just makes you more skillful. Praise the Lord. Well, would wisdom do that? Well, if the leading of the Spirit is uh, leading you to do it, it would be the wisest thing you ever did. Not if you're just... You know, somebody said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and do this. God's leading me to do this. Well, if it, if it falls apart and doesn't work, ringy-dingy, it wasn't God. So if it, but if it worked, it was God. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been there before where it didn't work. Well, that wasn't God. <laughs> God's not leading me into failure. Not leading you into failure. Praise God. Now, 1 Timothy 1, 4 in the Amplified Classic, it talks about uh, the divine training which is in faith. The Amplified Classic, the divine training, 1 Timothy 1, 4, the divine training which is in faith. Do you realize that he's talking about a, 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 a Holy Ghost school? The Holy Ghost will school you into a life of faith. He'll, he'll, keep, you, he'll keep your faith active if you'll follow him, and vibrant and growing. Amen. Working on successive successes. Remember? Continuing to reach and expand and grow. Do you know that God has a plan for your life and to fulfill that plan is going to require you walking by faith? But if, but if, if you won't use your faith back here on the little things, he can't get you ready for what he really has in mind for you. But if you'll keep developing, keep stretching. I'm not saying you're not. I believe a lot of you are. But I'm just encouraging you. Keep on reaching. Keep on. And I'm not saying reach beyond your measure of faith. But we're, I mean, sometimes people say, I'm reaching and I can't even hardly sleep at night. I'm, I'm so stretched in faith. Well, you're beyond your measure. Remember, the, the measuring stick is joy and peace. But if you can stay back there in that joy and peace and you, you can know. Yeah, and you can just laugh. Praise the Lord. Then, then the Holy Ghost can keep on developing you in this. Praise the Lord. All right, so as I grow spiritually, I've learned more and more the statement that we've made in the past, you can't separate faith from being led by the Holy Ghost. 
He'll lead you right into a vibrant faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank God for the word. Um, boy, there's so much. I, uh, I, I don't have time to get into this all, but there are some things in the wisdom of God that God knows you're not ready for, so he won't lead you out into it. But he will develop you where you are and get you ready. He'll, he'll work with where you are, and he'll keep on prompting you about taking little steps, whatever, whatever steps he prompts you to do. And if you keep on taking those, I'll tell you, there's nothing like taking a step of faith and then seeing the victory. It's like, whoa, all right, come on now. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Even if it's a little victory. Yeah. I mean, it might seem like to some people a little small thing, but but, but spiritual people, they'll go, hey, let's get some some of those party whistles and a party hat, man. We need to go for ice cream. Look at this. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, but as he leads you, he'll get you ready and he'll develop you in faith. And, uh, and it won't damage your faith. It'll stay within your measure and keep developing it. You know, it's a little like developing muscles on a, you know, if you're going to a gym and you're developing muscles. You can, you, it's the wisdom of God to go in there and gradually start developing your muscles. Not pour 450 pounds on the barbells and say, come here, come here, bring... I mean, you're going to ruin some muscles, right? Yeah. Same thing spiritually. But, I mean, get whatever, the 50-pound weight, and just do, do all the reps and keep on doing it, and, you know, whatever, three times a week or whatever you're doing. And after a while, you can go up to 100, t- 100 pounds with those reps, right? And uh, what at one time would have been real tough. Maybe you're going up to 250 or something. It would have been real tough when you first went in there, but now it's nothing. Same thing with your faith. Same thing with your faith. You can keep on developing. David, David developed on the lion and the bear before he got to Goliath. So just keep on. Don't, don't ever be satisfied not reaching for something. I'm not even talking about finance. I'm talking about healing or, or, or a victory in your thought life or, or walking in peace. or just, you, could, you could just take this so many directions. Amen. So um, if you follow the Holy Ghost, he'll, he'll like it said there in 1 Timothy, was that 1-4, he'll, he'll take you through your own personal faith school. He'll, he'll show you. Remember Jesus said to Brother Hagin, I've taught you faith through my word and through certain experiences that I've uh, allowed you to go through. Now teach my people what I've taught you. He didn't just teach him faith from the Bible. He taught him faith by leading him out into something and showing him how this works. Nobody ever learns like they should learn by just book, learning, book, book learning. Just because you went to college doesn't mean you know how to run a business. I mean, you've got to get out there and do it. Sit under somebody else's doing it. Well, I got a degree in business. Well, big whoop de doo That's what people do in government. They, they think they're smart, and they've never run, they, they've never run, a, they've never run anything. They haven't even run their own life. Their own life is a mess. Tell your neighbor he went ahead and started preaching now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So get, get this in James 1. We've got to start wrapping the begin to think about starting to wrap this up. James 1, 5 through 8. You can see there, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Remember, but let him ask in faith, so forth and so on. Context is test or trials. So we're told to ask for wisdom in the middle of that. Yes. Amen. So uh, it's... If something has been just a continuous struggle over a long period of time, don't just keep putting your head down and, and grunt your way through it. You know what I'm talking about? Like I said, with high blood pressure and veins bulging and you're never any, any, any enjoyment to be around because you're always stressed out. Tell your neighbor, that's pretty good right there. So a lot of these things are just a result of an inaccurate application of one's faith. They haven't really got the mind of God of what's really going on in the situation. I've told you this before, but I'll tell it again. You ever, like in the springtime, gotten the garden hose back out and you want to get water your yard or something, and it's always tangled up, right? It's been, it's been hanging there just the whole, whole, whole winter long right there just in your garage. But you pull it out and it's all tangled up. 
and, and you could just go to yanking on it, right? And it just makes it worse. Yeah. Or you can just, just look at where's, and usually there's only one or two that yeah. need to be pulled out, exactly. right? Yep. And the whole thing just opens up. That's the way these things are. Sometimes people, this is what, they're, like, like in faith, if you can see them in the spirit, they're just yanking on it. Just, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And it, it's just getting worse. Right? It's true. And three years later, they're still, in Jesus' name. I think you need some wisdom. You need to look at what God knows about this situation. There's something that he knows that you don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's really, when, when listen, tell, tell your neighbor, faith really does work. It really does work. And when you're, when you're using it and you're applying your faith at the wisdom of God and at the mind of God, it works easy and it works quickly. I'm not saying, I'm not preaching tonight against persevering. I'm just simply saying sometimes people are not persevering with a good application of their faith. Amen. I don't believe faith is supposed to be a struggle. I read in my Bible, faith is a rest. Hebrews chapter 4 says faith is a rest. If something's continuously labored and heavy laden and you're not getting any results, um, you're misapplying your faith. Find out the mind of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, saw, uh, um, I, I remember Brother Hagin's uh, sister. Brother Hagin tells this story about, I think it was his sister died prematurely. Um, he endeavored to pray, or, pray, pray the prayer of faith for her and so forth. Um, by the way, um, I'll tell you a little insight on that. He had already prayed the prayer of faith for her, I think, once or twice. And he couldn't do it, I think it was either the second or the third time. And he said, the Lord asked, he asked the Lord about it, and he said, well, uh, whenever you prayed the prayer of faith for them the first time, then they saw what's available, and they should have gotten interested in developing their own faith. You can't carry people forever. Any parents in here want to carry a 32-year-old for the whole? And they're still wanting their bank, blanky and their binky? I see a mom right here. She's going, no. <laughs> you're out. You're out, buddy. You're out. Right? And God won't carry you or let us carry you or somebody else carry you forever. He expects us all to grow up. Learn to walk by faith on our own. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so, but anyway, Brother Hagin endeavored to pray the prayer of faith for her this, this next time, and, and uh, she didn't receive. She went, she went on to heaven. Well, Brother Hagin, they're having the funeral and everything, and Brother Hagin was, you know, um, anyway, so, but, but he had this experience. He was caught up to heaven. And he, when he got to heaven, he, was, he, he, he saw his uh, sister and Jesus talking, and he began to walk over to where they were talking. And whenever uh, he began to walk up, his sister's back is to him, but Jesus looked up, saw Brother Hagin, and uh, his sister realized somebody's walking up. She turned around and saw Brother Hagin. And this is in the vision. And in the vision, Jesus, I mean, uh, in the vision, the sister said, uh, she called him Ken, or I, I forget what, you know, family relative. Uh, don't, don't take it so hard I forget exactly how she said it that you couldn't pray the prayer of faith for me she said there was a reason get that there was a reason there's always a reason there's always a reason there's causes um, so that uh, and then the vision disappeared Jesus later told him don't entertain it in your thought life you know in other words it wasn't Brother Higgins business so, because other people's business is not always ours, our business. We want to help people as much as we can, but the Lord might, always, might not always reveal everything to us. I'm trying to quit. It's Carlos's fault. He's, he's up here pulling so, pulling so strong. Blame him after service. <laughs> but anyway, so, but um, I thought about that, and I thought, well, first of all, Brother Hagin, <laughs> he's back in his body, back on the earth, and he still doesn't know why. You know, when it comes to you, you can always know why. When it comes to other people, you might not always know why. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret thing belongs to the Lord. But what has been revealed, that belongs to us. But anyway, so, but, uh, so Brother Hagin said uh, that he, he still didn't know, and he didn't know to that day what it was. But I thought about that, and I thought, 
um, she obviously, because she said, uh, stand up with me, that'll help me quit. <clears throat> she said to Brother Hagin, don't, don't feel badly that you couldn't pray the prayer of faith. There was a reason. There was a reason. Obviously, she now knew the reason. Look at her say, she, there, there was a reason. She didn't know that before she went to heaven, but she knows it now. I think that's what her and Jesus were standing there talking about. I could be wrong, but she's all of a sudden aware of the reason. Now, think about that. The Bible says when we get to heaven, we'll know as we are known. We'll know as, in other words, there'll be, things will come clearer. Uh, so here's what I want you to get. All the answers come clear in heaven. But James 1 is telling us we don't need to wait to get to heaven to get the answers. There are answers. There are real answers. I just need to, I need to get the answer. I, get, I need to, how do I get the answer? We started out with praise and worship. There's times you just need to say, Father, I just need help. Just be, be about it. I need help. And I'm going to get in your presence until you show me the answer. Good, bad, or ugly. If it's ugly, it's ugly. But if, the, if it's the answer, it's the answer. I've had some things. I just told you a story tonight about me. It was, it was ugly. That ain't pretty. <laughs> Not walking in love, criticizing other preachers. That ain't pretty. But it was the answer. I don't think God's... <laughs> the thing I love about the Holy Ghost is this, he's always squeaky clean truth. True. Everything's true. It's not always complimentary, but it's true. We can get on this, this side of it or get on that side of it. We can get mad. We can get glad. We can do whatever we want to do, but it's the truth. The truth is the truth. People today don't like it. I'm not talking about you, but in our society, don't like the truth. You know what I'm talking about? That is the truth. People don't like the truth because that means they got to change. Change. Why? Because I was raw, 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 I was raw, wrong. Well, what to do? So what? Get right and get, get, get on the track and get, get, get back in the blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, there's so much to this. I didn't get through 10% of my notes and I didn't. But, but I believe we got what we needed tonight. Praise the Lord. There's real answers for real problems and real, if, you're, if you get real, there's real answers for real problems. And uh, be ready for him to speak about, th talk to you about things that wasn't on your mind. That's, I, I got a situation in my life right now. I'm like, I, I'm, just, I'm just seeking God because he promised me, you know, uh, uh, Hebrews, 1, he, Hebrews 11, verse 6, uh, come to God, believe that he is, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God will reward you asking and seeking for wisdom. I need, I need an answer in this situation. Why is this, why is it, why have I been struggling in this area? Nobody's ever struggled here, right? Doesn't have to be that way. There's victory every time, every time, every time, every time, every time. Let's not be okay with anything less. Amen. Amen. Not here condemning anybody. I, I got. Th I'm not. I'm not looking at you because I'm. <laughs> I got some things right now. I'm looking at. Amen. Amen. So so praise the Lord. Did that help? Did the word help you tonight? I'm not okay with being where I am. I thank God for what God's done, but I'm not okay with staying here for the rest of my life. There's some areas like like some some areas in my thought life that that I'm like, why did I take that kind of thinking? Again. For me, it's been deal God's been dealing with me about hard thinking. Oh, it's going to be hard. Stop that. <laughs> Light and easy. Go listen to Pastor Nancy. What was that, Monday night or something on the Miracle Crusade. Oh, <laughs> that was for me. That was for me. That was for me. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you, Father. We're, we're just not okay. We're just not okay with things just remaining the way they are. In Jesus' name, 
Father, we, we know you have answers for every situation that just has not been flowing like it should be in our lives. We thank you it's not difficult. We thank you it's not difficult. We raise our hands and we lift our voice tonight in praise. Go ahead and lift your voice in praise to him tonight. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Thank you that you're faithful. You're faithful to show us the path of life, as your word says. Show us the way of escape, as your word says. Show us the answers to every situation. Hallelujah. You're faithful. You're so faithful, Father God. As we quiet our mind and enter into your presence with thanksgiving, we thank you. Answers come. Answers come. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I mean, we could take an hour right now and do it, but we won't take that time together. You can go home and just enter into that place. I'll tell you, I like to go to sleep, you know, just, you know, doing like what we were doing right now. I like to go to sleep that way. It seems like whenever I do that, either I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll get an answer or I'll wake up the next morning and get an answer or something because you went to bed right. You went to bed with the door open to God rather than your mind on something else, you know. Amen. So, you know, let's go, go do a different routine tonight on the way, on, yeah, before we go to bed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I feel like I half cheated you because there's so much I wanted to get to. But anyway, I'll just leave that with God. Greet your neighbor. Tell them, thank God for answers tonight. Amen. You're, don't forget Sunday morning we're going to have a, the outreach, so it's going to be a different kind of service. But we're okay with maybe a different flow because we're focused on people that need Jesus, and we're okay with that, right? And you're going to bring somebody and learn how to pray for people and all of that. Praise the Lord. So you're dismissed. We'll see you Sunday morning.